define what conservatism is for them, what is what would be a conservative approach to uh, governing for you? You know, we've heard certainly the Tea Party approaches, we've heard other approaches, uh, you know, the George W. Bush approach and so forth. What is what would be a conservative way of running government in your opinion? I think the, the best thing to do is go to the lowest common uh, common denominator is simply get rid of baloney, all the misconception, educate yourself. Uh, capital gains taxes, for instance, uh, create more jobs. It doesn't. We need smaller classrooms and kids would learn better. That's not the problem. The problem with the African Americans is whiteies is, is screwing them out of this and that. That's not the problem. The problem with, uh, for instance, you know, the concept of, of winning the war on terror, is sit there and negotiate, do all that nonsense. Eisenhower had it simple when he, when he called in, he was dying, it was at Walter Reed Hospital, and he called in Henry Kissinger, he says, listen, young man, he says, if you go to war, go to war to win. Cut through all the nonsense and do things that work right. If you don't know how things are work, benchmark somebody else and see how, how that's worked. Okay. Let's uh, uh, talk a little bit about then uh, just how you differentiate yourself from your other opponents. Um, you know, we certainly have uh, we had opponents starting to appear on radio and other media interviews. Uh, Paige Kriegel, for example, this morning was on Daybreak. Uh, 92.5 saying that for him he knew how to tell leadership no that he had proved he had proved it in, uh, during his time at the legislature. We've heard Trey Radel talk about the approach that I mean he's very gung ho about saying this administration is a socialist administration. So actually, I'm, I'm starting to focus this question. But what is your position on uh, the Obama health care plan, and uh, would you seek to repeal it? Well, first of all, a congressman can't repeal it unless you get he's going to veto anything, he come up with anything, so that's nonsense. I'm fairly certain that the Supreme Court is going to overturn it. If the Supreme Court doesn't, then they can tell you, well, the government can tell you you have to drive, uh, drive a hybrid car, do whatever you want to play, duplicate bridge, or whatever the government wants you to. So I don't think that's an issue. But l let me ask it in this way, because obviously there are 435 elected officials you'll be working with if you're elected. How will you strive to be effective? How will you work with, what is your approach, your <coughs> way of of, of working on consensus or compromise or lack thereof in order to get your initiatives going. How would you approach, let's say, a, a repeal or some other type of, some, some of, I know you, you've mentioned that you're not interested in legislation per se, but, but that's one of the roles of the con of member of Congress is to either look to repeal, look to pass. How would you approach that process of building camaraderie and, uh, and building influence for Southwest Florida? Because ultimately, one of the expectations of the what we hear from our, our readership is, you know, are you, and you may disagree with this, but are you going to bring home the bacon? You know, what are you going to do for Southwest Florida? Well, first of all, our representative lately hasn't brought home the bacon. And you've got to remember that the bacon all comes from the same pig, and we pay for that, too. Now, as far as uh, building a consensus, that's all very nice. And my wife tells me I should do that more and be less confrontational. But things have changed. And we're, we're a lost area that I know it represents us. Nobody's ever heard of us. We were out whining about Columbus, Ohio, or Las Vegas having uh, high uh, vacancies in their houses, and, and nobody even heard of Fort Myers, Florida. That, that isn't right. We need a representative that can represent us, not that consensus with his buddies in Congress and vote all of us, a lot, lot step for that. You're talking about Kriegel and who was the other guy? Oh, Trey Rail. Uh, saying what they say this morning, and that's what's really wrong. They tell you, well, that other guy, he's doing a lousy job, and what we need with, I call them the NITA candidates. You see the Republicans all running in all those debates. We need to, we need to, that and that and that and strong friend. We need another. We need a guy in there that can tell you, this is what's wrong with it, this is what I would do to solve it, and this is the kind of consensus, consensus I'll build with people. Hey, you're wrong about the small businesses, for instance, and explain it. This is my position. And if you don't believe, let's hear your position. And maybe I'll go along with it. But lockstep voting to have to build consensus is nonsense. We've had enough of that. We don't need any more of those people. So should I tell you what I really think? Well, sure. No, no that's, that's what we're here for. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, how do you change the? How do you change a mindset just with one voice? Yeah. If, you're, you're whistling in the wind, in essence. Yeah, that, you know, if we if we uh, took that attitude, we wouldn't have a, a country. George Washington would still be would be planning somewhere, and he'd be a captain. 
which was his real dream to be a high officer in the British Army. Uh, somebody's got to step forward and say something. If this is a beginning, if it's an educational, that's a silly thing to say, but if it's an educational campaign, fine. I just like somebody here to say somebody would agree. You don't agree, tell me where I'm wrong. Maybe we'll agree with you, but uh, yeah, it's whist pissing in the wind if you want to say it that way. That's, that's the way it goes. I'm not going to change. I'm not going to go along. And, I'm not going to sit there and tell somebody, I'll vote this way, or I'll do some way, or I'm for gay rights, or I'm for this. And when I'm not, the plan I'm about. I'm going to tell you what it is. If you want a, an honest candidate, a person isn't going to lie to you, that's going to represent you and not his buddies and his people up in Tallahassee with, with fun reasons and stuff, that's fine. But yes, it's, it's going to be an uphill fight, but I'm not about to change. How are you going to campaign? campaign? What are you doing so far? Well, so far, uh, there isn't any interest. I go to these meetings and everybody brings their friends and everybody else just, you know, it's, what will happen, unfortunately, is after we get the slate, I think, in June, early June. And my strong point in is, is getting up and speaking extemporaneously. You ask me something, I can solve it. And I can speak for 40 minutes, four hours if you want, you know, if you want to shut me up. I have the solutions. I have an organized system on how to develop to you. I'm a great public speaker. Hopefully that I will get invited to groups before I instead of these snoozy guys and get up there and give you the platitudes, that I can explain things and they'll find it interesting. And more than anything, they'll say, yeah, that's right, I never thought of that. I'm like, that, that does sound like a good solution. That's the way I'm going to campaign. I'm just going to get up and tell it the way it is. You say whistle in the wind. I mean, I'm start. I'm struggling to figure out how you. You said that. I said. No, I understand, but you sort of agreed with that. I mean, you, you you agreed with that. Yeah, I, you know, reality's reality. I'm, so how effective would you be as a campaigner? Well, as a as a, as a, as a uh, congressman. Oh, it's different than a congressman. Once you get elected, you don't have to worry about those other people. People will listen to it. But I mean, what's the point of listening if you can't implement any change? Oh, I think by listening. Hey, listen. People do have some power in this country, doggone it. Enough people, for instance, write to their congressmen and tell you, hey, as they do with the Paul Ryan scheme, they'll tell you they agree with that. They'll tell you other congressmen, I think we should vote for it. I think you find that there are a lot of, uh, there are quite a few congressmen that stand out that you hear a lot from, and I'm going to be one of them. I'm probably twice as loud as any of them. Aren't there ways to, uh, what ways would you be affected as a Southwest Florida candidate or a congressman? Uh, what could you do where you can't, one person can't change Washington, but you can change Southwest Florida by being here all the time, by bringing uh, government to the people. What would you do? That's a good point. Um, that's exactly what I have in my mind on how to govern. Open offices are not. What's wrong with a congressman who live out in California and live up in Washington, D.C., and that's where most of my relatives are, my daughter works for the government, is I would be down here knocking on doors. What's, I don't, if you don't vote for me, if I go up, for instance, in the African-American community and they start reading what I have to say about self-sufficient and, and all that nonsense, is they're not going to vote for me. But they have a right because I'm a representative for everyone. We're not running as representatives at large. We're running for to represent people in this community. I go before my veterans groups, I make speeches, I knock on people's doors, I step against the hey, as I did when I ran the census. I used to go into the ghetto areas and none of my census takers would go in there. I just go in and knock on the door and say this and that. I explain. You have a problem, let's hear it. Your representative represents you, you have a right to be heard. Run advertise on the paper, be available. We had a town hall meeting when they passed this uh, the health care bill, the Obama care bill, they said about it. And everybody, remember the town hall meetings where everybody was up screaming and yelling at the guy? Our congressman goes on a two-week vacation. Oh, you don't need to know. Hey, gosh, I'm voting no. Congressman no is voting no. No, that's not good enough. I wanted to hear what the heck the bill was in that bill. But there he is. He'd feel he had, he had to come and explain it to anybody. He didn't feel, and some of the congressmen, most of them, got these constituency, but they didn't want to get screamed at. I'd rather people disagree with me. We learn more from disagreement than if I sit there and fawn all over you and tell you, gee, please, first thing I tell you is send me some money for my campaign. 
part of your go you would be going as a Republican. What would you do to represent the fairly high percentage of Democrats in our community? Like I said I represent everybody. I, you elect me, whoever elects me, that doesn't matter. There are issues, and I have more, for instance, the educational system or some of the budget funding I see we have this morning. I'll be glad to participate in, in speeches, but if you want to give me some suggestions how you might cut some uh, cut some funds here and there. One being the, the money we spent on that property over by the Veterans Center. Uh, but, yeah, you have to represent anybody. You have to make a presence. Show up at the black churches. Show up at the uh, get-togethers for... I've been over to Jim Roach's office more than I've been anywhere. I know I celebrated his birthday over there. I see he's a friend of mine. I have no problem with that. Bipartisan is fine when you vote. It's generally it's 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 what's wrong with this country. Party politics first, American people never I don't know. Uh, are there any legacy issues that you'd like to show uh, in Southwest Florida? Whether or not you can fully take credit, Representative Mack will say you know, I helped get the money for the S75 expansion. I helped get the money for the uh, veterans uh, clinic that's coming here, and so forth. Those are two examples. Is there anything for you that is absolutely critical that you'd like to see accomplished, that you would like to put your name on, that you said you did this for well, Southwest Board? As soon as that's the past, and I haven't been there, and I have proposal that you might find on my website, <coughs> about solving the housing project. You know, the problem we have with that. We went through this, we put billions of dollars into this and that. The federal government in the long run is going to be responsible. They're going to pay the base fail with these loans, they're going, to, they're going to pay for it. The taxpayers are going to pay for it. I suggested refinance all viable loans at 2%. That drops everybody's payment 40% over the same 30 years in term. Then people won't go out, for instance, they won't go out and, and rent and move somewhere else to stay in the house because their payments will be the same. Is that, um, and I forget your question. What was it again? You're answering it, but it's with regard to the kind of legacy legislation because you're talking no, about the housing. Legacy. you got to think a little bit. Get, get the stuff in there. Southwest Florida, where's that? Oh, it's in Southwest Florida. No, but I'll bet you one out of 50 people can't tell you it's Fort Myers and uh, I can't tell you. And Naples together. They just simply can't. And Bonita Springs. They don't know what it is. We have a disaster. I went to uh, my group, my, I don't tell you which one, probably 100 reunion couple years ago in high school and I stayed with my brother in law and I discussed we were discussing our problems here and I told him, I said, Well we have a problem with Chinese drywall. He said, excuse me, brother. you got me there. What's Chinese drywall? What's Chinese drywall? We all know what it is. You ever walk in one of those houses and that smell knocks you down. You know dog one well already, but the rest of the country doesn't know that. Our representative ought to be up there. Harry Reid's up there whining and boo hooing about all the poverty there is and in Las Vegas. Why isn't County Mac up there telling it? One in four of our houses are empty and the grass is growing around. We have Chinese drywall, we have unemployment. Our large, our largest employee, well, second, retail first, is construction and it's gone. Those jobs are gone. We need help. Did you ever hear that guy up there calling? I didn't hear the guy doing anything except campaigning for senator. This representative will make sure everybody knows what the problems are here. We have seniors here. Don't you sit there, Mr. Paul Ryan, and tell me you're going to start cutting our benefits because we paid for them in advance. You spent the money. You go spend the rest of your life with Bernie Madoff in jail. I want my money. Cut it somewhere else. Well, we've come to the end of this interview. We've got about a minute and a half left or so. Is there anything uh, you'd like to add before we conclude? No. Okay. Well, Mr. Sawyer, we want to thank you so much on behalf of the editorial board. We appreciate your time. Best of success to you. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.